Welcome to another super interesting hacker rank challenge and today we are going to be talking about forming a magic square. Actually when I looked at this problem for the first time I it was really very difficult to figure out exactly what to do. Now I'm going to explain it to you and you'll see that it kind of is easy but it can be quite confusing. It says we define a magic square to be an n by n matrix of distinct positive integers from 1 to n squared where the sum of any row and column or diagonal of length n is always equal to the same number, the magic constant, you will be given a 3x3 three three matrix of s of integers in the inclusive range of 1 to 9. We can convert any digit a to any other digit b in the range 1 to 9 at the cost of a minus b, so given s, convert it to a magic square with, at minimal cost. Print this cost on a new line. And note the resulting magic square must contain distinct integers inclusive of the range 1 to 9. Now, if you are a programmer just like me, the, the first thing you might think of is when you have a, a, a square given like this, you might start by reducing each of the elements. For instance, you want to change 5, you want to change it to 6, and then you test whether it's a magic square, you change it to 7. Kind of you are doing very little steps until you get it becomes a magic square and then you return the, uh, the, the, the number of steps, you know. So that's kind of an iterative way of doing it, trying to avoid so many loops. But this is not how it is. This question is very confusing because now what you need to know is magic squares for 3 by 3, there, there can only be 8 of them. So if I go back to my whiteboard, I have determine there are eight of these magic squares and these are these magic squares here. So if I'm if I have to write out the first one is eight, one, six, three, five, seven, and four, nine, two. Okay, so this is this magic square here and the magic number as I told you as was mentioned in the in the challenge is here is 15. All right, and for all these other eight magic squares, it's simply exactly like this one, simply either rotated or reflected. For instance, if we take 672 and put it on top, it gets this one, so we have 672, 159, which is the middle, and we have 8, 3, 4. So it's basically the same thing, but it's being rotated or reflected. So one thing you need to do in this problem is you have to generate this magic square. Uh, you, you need to generate this list of magic squares, right? But actually you can just copy this list and use it to solve the challenge because the logic of generating this magic square is more or less makes this problem an expert or even beyond hard and expert. So one thing you can do, which I see many other um, um, programmers do, simply copy this and use it in your challenge in the, in the, in the hacker round code. Again, let me just show you, in case you want to actually know how to generate this code, uh, then you can use this function here. I'm going to leave this link to this function in the description box. In case you want to generate it yourself, you can actually use it. So this is how to generate a 3 by 3 magic square. Okay, let's get back here. Now you have this magic square here. So if you are given an array, for instance, in the question we have, uh, we have this array, 5, 3, 4, 1, 5, 8, 6, 4, 2. 5, 3, 4, 1, 5, 8, 6, 4, 2, okay? So what you simply need to do to solve this problem, to change this into a magic square, is to compare it with an existing magic square and save the cost for, for, for conversion. So in this case, we are going to compare to convert this S into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then for each of them, we are going to save the cost of conversion and at the end of the day, return the least cost. So what it means is we will need two helper functions. The first one is, I call it get cost. 
So this get cost is going to take this given matrix here and it's going to take a single matrix square here. So I'm going to call it M. So what this get cost function is going to do is going to say while you iterate through this element of this list, we are going to be comparing them, or even not comparing them, but simply subtracting and getting the difference between the two. This difference between the two is a cost. So you're going to do 6, 5 is what? Is 1. 3, 7 uh, is 4. 4, uh, 2. And you have to get the total cost of conversion in this way. So that's what this is going to do. It's going to take a single one, a single uh, a matrix, and it's also going to take one of these and then uh, return the cost, right? Okay, so that's basically uh, it. So that's the only helper function we are going to need. And at the end of the day, simply return the minimum cost. Let's go write it. So as I'm writing, I'll be explaining as I go. So let's write this code. So the first thing I would like to write is this helper function that says get cost. So I'm going to write this helper function that says get cost. I'm going to say def get cost. And it's going to take an array or the ma a matrix. And it's also going to take a magic, one of the magic squares by single magic square. It's going to re return the cost of converting an array into a magic square. So I'm going to start with cost is equal to zero, and then I'm going to say for i in range, for i in i in range three, because now we have that it must be three by three for j in range three as well, and now we are going to calculate the cost. Before we start calculating the cost, we need to initialize. Sorry, ah uh, yeah. We have to, yeah, let's, we don't need to initialize anything. We simply calculate the cost to be cost is equal to cost plus, and then you're going to take the absolute difference of, of the two, of the absolute difference, uh, the absolute difference of the two current elements of the two arrays. So I'm going to say ARRIJ, and this is ARRIJ, minus magic i j as well actually you can also use the zip function in python but i think we can just keep it simple for now so at this point it's going to calculate the total cost uh, it becomes the sum of the whole sum will give you the total cost and we're gonna, we are just going to return the cost here so now we have the cost of, of, of converting a matrix to a magic square. Now we're going to now solve the problem. Uh, first, we are going to copy this. I'm going to copy this. Yeah, so as I told you, we are going to copy this array and we are going to use it in our uh, program. So I'm going to copy this right here because we are actually going to use it for comparison. So I'm going to paste it here. I call it all magic. So I'm going to also invent this. Uh, give it a second. Yeah. So I'm also going to invent this one. Okay, so we have all magic. So I'm going to look through these eight items because this is eight arrays. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we are going to look through uh, all the arrays here and for each of them we are going to check the cost of converting the given array which is this S into uh, one of these magic squares. So I'm going to initiate a loop that says for square for square in all magic for square in all magic I'm going to now get the cost cost is equal to get cost. I'm going to give all magic. Sorry, I'm going to give square because we are we have a current square, and then I'm going to give the array s. Okay, there is a cost. Now 
we have these costs, yes. Um, we have this cost that is fine. And we also need to initialize a minimum cost, the, uh, the minimum cost for now. So we're going to initialize the minimum cost before we start this loop. We're going to initialize the minimum cost to be the maximum integer in the system. So 6.man size. Yeah. So once we calculate and we have the cost to be less than the mean cost, we simply replace the mean cost. So the easiest thing to do is simply say mean cost is the minimum of the two. So it's going to be mean cost and the current cost we have calculated here. Okay, so at this point, we will now return the mean cost. So I'm going to say return the mean cost. So I think we are done with this problem at this point. So the key is you must have this magic square. If you want to go the extra mile, then take my code and then generate it yourself. It means that you have to write one more helper function uh, to be able to solve this problem. Okay, let's try to run this code and let's see what we have. So it passes the first two sample test cases, test case zero and one. So we are going to submit now to see if it works. Alright, you can see it passes all the test cases provided. So I think we did a good job. Um, I'd like to thank you for viewing and also I would like to remind you to subscribe to my channel if you've not subscribed. And also leave me a comment if you have any challenges whatsoever. I remain thanks on the Tech Pro and I'm always there for you.